How you doing? I'm Callan and this is Slapped Ham. The following bizarre mysteries are sure to freak you out. So hit that subscribe button and get ready for more scary content. Just like this. Is it possible to conjure up ghosts simply with our minds? That was the question asked by a group of individuals from the Toronto Society of Psychical Research in the early 1970s. None of the members of the group were gifted with any supposed psychic or spiritual powers. Still, they were curious to see if they could conjure up a ghost by simply using their collective imagination and visualization. Lead researcher Dr. A.R. George Owen believed that ghosts were merely an illusion created by the mind, if the mind truly believed it to be so. To test Dr. Owen's theory, the group created a fictitious spirit named Philip. Philip was given a complete biography by the group, from his birth to his unfortunate death by suicide at the age of 30. The spirit was born in the 1620s in England and was a knighted member of the military. One day he met and fell in love with a gypsy girl beginning an affair with her. His wife discovered the affair and burned the girl at the stake. As a result, Philip ended his life driven to death by sorrow. For the experiment, the group was seated around a table discussing Philip as well as visualizing him and his life. For months, absolutely nothing occurred, though some group members swear that they could feel another presence among them. After a few months, the group decided to switch up the experiment by incorporating a more traditional seance scene, dimming the lights around them and placing their hands on a table. In doing so, they hoped that Philip would speak to them by either knocking on or rotating the table. Only when they changed the experiment up did they finally find some success. They asked Philip questions about his life and the supposed spirit began to interact with the group. There was rapping on and vibrations of the table as well as unexplained echoes and sudden gusts of air felt by the group. At one point, the table the group was sitting at levitated and moved across the room of its own accord. The experiment began to be filmed and at one point there was a live taping of the group done in front of an audience of 50 people. A video on YouTube gives glimpses into the experiment, including snippets of the actual paranormal activity. In the video uploaded by History vs Hollywood on YouTube, viewers can see the group seated around the table. Hands out, asking Philip questions. At one point, a rapping sound can be heard in response to a question. Following this, the table shakes and seems to lift off the ground. The video cuts to another clip with the group standing up with their hands on the table, singing. Suddenly, the table completely tilts to the left, falling on its side. Dr. Owen's wife, Iris Owen, explains that the group was very surprised when they first heard the knocking. The video then cuts to an interview with psychologist Dr. Joel Witten, who theorizes that the paranormal occurrences happen due to the collective belief and concentrated energy of the group. The group is involved in a, a joint feeling of neutrality. Each member almost intuitively senses the other person and their feelings. Is it some type of concentration of energy? The Philip experiment was met with both awe and criticism in its day. The main criticism lay in the fact that the experiment didn't have any control factors, as usually found in scientific experiments. Additionally, the scientific community remains hesitant to call seances trustworthy. There have been other groups who have tried to replicate the experiment, though usually to no avail. The Philip experiment may be just one mystery left unsolved. In April 2016, a 7.3 magnitude earthquake hit Fukuoka, a city located in northern Kyushu Island, Japan. 
While the earthquake caused plenty of damage itself, it was what happened shortly after that left many residents scratching their heads. 90 miles from the epicenter of the earthquake appeared a thick foam that covered the streets. Residents walked and drove over the foam but had no idea where it emerged from. In some places, the mysterious foam was knee-high, making it hard to wade through. Other residents refused to leave their houses in fear of what the foam could be. Local first responders and authority figures tried to theorise where exactly the foam came from. Some believe the foam could have been derived from a busted pipe under the streets, though no cracks could be found in the streets which the foam could have leaked through. Others thought the foam could be from a firefighter's hose, though no foam was found in the hoses either, and the sheer size and breadth of which the foam covered made no sense either. Still today, the foam remains a complete mystery with no explanation given. What do you think this foam could be? Love to get your thoughts on this strange mystery in the comments section below. To this day, 80% of the ocean remains unexplored by mankind. This has left plenty of room for speculations and theories as to what mysteries are in the deep blue, just waiting to be discovered. One of these mysteries became known as the Baltic Sea Anomaly. In 2011, the Swedish diving team named Ocean X came across an abnormal sonar image, leading to a baffling discovery, a sunken object that strikingly resembled a craft of some kind. The object quickly became known as the Baltic Sea Anomaly, as it was discovered in the Baltic Sea between Sweden and Finland. The diving team described the object as having what looked to be man-made formations, including ramps and stairways. Scientists quickly began to come up with ideas to explain the strange object, including the idea that it was a geological formation created over thousands of years, possibly since the Ice Age. Samples taken from the object and examined by scientists concluded that the structure is made mostly of granites, gneisses and sandstone. The object's discovery led to some controversy, as the tabloids began to create sci-fi fantasies of what the object could be. These fantasies included everything from being a flying saucer to the Millennium Falcon. Scientists around the world were adamant that this was nothing more than a simple rock formation blown out of proportion. The Ocean X diving team also eventually came under fire, as they offered to take wealthy tourists down to the sea floor to see the object for themselves. The team also claimed that they were never able to capture a good photo of the object due to technical difficulties. Many believe the group have exaggerated what the anomaly really looks like in order to gain notoriety. Could this be the case? Or has the mystery object blended in just well enough to escape deeper discovery? Over the years, there have been countless supposed alien sightings, with one of the most prominent occurring in early 1800s Japan. Whether it's simply a Japanese legend or a real recorded experience remains up for debate to this day. The event took place in 1803 in the Hitachi province of eastern Japan. A group of fishermen on the region's coast noticed a large ship drifting alone in the waters. Curious, the group towed the boat to shore to inspect it. The large boat resembled a wooden rice pit, with the upper half of the ship constructed of rosewood and the lower half of brazen plates. The strange ship was said to have windows made of crystal lined by an unknown resin. The fishermen decided to look inside the ship, where they saw inscriptions written in an unknown language. Suddenly, they came across a peculiar figure, a beautiful woman somewhere between the ages of 18 and 20. With very pale pinkish skin, striking red hair, she was donning clothes that were unrecognisable to the group of Japanese fishermen. Furthermore, she spoke a language the group couldn't understand and held a box in her hand that she wouldn't let others go near. The villagers began to speculate as to who this woman could be, with one villager theorising that the woman was a prominent figure in her homeland, wherever that may have been. He further speculated that she was cast away from her homeland after engaging in adultery, and inside the box that she so desperately protected was the head of her deceased lover. The other villagers became terrified and decided to send the woman back to her boat, 
so she could drift away. This same story was recounted in three different texts over the years, with each text following the same themes of a strange boat that looked nothing like regular boats of the period, as well as a beautiful woman holding a mysterious box close to her. Plenty of Japanese and international researchers have tried to find an explanation for this story. Some believe that the drawings that accompanied the story portrayed what a typical Russian woman might have looked like at the time, including the description of her hair and skin. Still, plenty of other individuals, including ufologists, believe the incident was an encounter with an alien species, and the boat was an unidentified craft of some kind. However, many Japanese individuals believe this story is simply a myth, created in olden times to add to Japanese folklore. $1 million to demonstrate some paranormal activity. Talk about a good deal. While this isn't a mystery as such, it's well worth taking a look at. The $1 million paranormal challenge was initiated by the James Randi Educational Foundation in 1964 to any applicant who could perform paranormal or supernatural activity beyond a reasonable doubt. Over 1,000 people applied and every single one failed. James Randi, a prominent stage magician, believed that there was absolutely nothing magical about magic. It was simply a well-planned and put-together illusion. Upon hearing this claim, a parapsychologist challenged him to put money up against any potential paranormal challenger. Randy initially agreed to give out a $1,000 prize, but as the challenge grew in popularity, other organizations and individuals decided to join in on the fun, raising funds up to $1 million US dollars. Until the challenge's discontinuation in 2015, applicants attempted to demonstrate many different kinds of skills and abilities, including medical dowsing, mediumship, and the use of performance-enhancing bracelets. One prominent psychic, Sylvia Brown, was challenged live on air by famous broadcaster and journalist Larry King to take the test. Brown accepted. On September 3rd, 2001, Brown and Randy appeared on Larry King Live once more, but Brown refused to take the test. Afterwards, Randy posted a timer on his website that recorded the number of days and weeks that had passed since Brown accepted the test but failed to follow through. A martial arts group based in Bali, Indonesia, known as Yellow Bamboo, claim one of their members, Pak Nyoman Serengan, can knock down approaching attackers from a distance using only a piece of yellow bamboo. Sketchy, low-resolution videos were posted to the group's website showing the alleged abilities. Here's some footage of the group's practices uploaded to YouTube by IET4C0S. Participants run at a practitioner who shouts and pushes them to the ground, allegedly by some sort of invisible force. Volunteers working with the James Randi Educational Foundation agreed to travel to Bali and conduct initial testing on these abilities. However, the Yellow Bamboo group began making excuses as to why they couldn't participate. Eventually, James Randi called the whole experiment off. Out of the hundreds of applicants applying for the fund, none of the experiments were successful, though some critics disagreed with the sincerity of Randi's challenge as the measurements of proving something was real without a doubt is hard to define. Still, the challenge was popular and remains a hot topic of conversation for paranormal fans around the world. Before we take a look at the bizarre life of Tina Resch, remember to hit that subscribe button, tickle that little bell icon there and turn on all channel notifications. That way you'll be in the loop every time we drop our scary and mysterious videos. Also, remember to click that thumbs up clickety right in the click hole. Tina Resch's story seems too bizarre to be true, though sometimes the truth is stranger than fiction. Tina's story starts in October of 1969. Just a few months after she was born, her mother brought her to the hospital and left her there, abandoning her. She was therein adopted by Joan and John Resch, who were physically abusive to her during her childhood. When she was 14, Tina watched the horror film The Poltergeist, 
and the alleged paranormal activity that would follow her for the rest of her life began. Shortly after watching the film, strange events started happening when Tina was near. These included flying objects around the house and things falling down from the walls. Parapsychologist William Roll decided to investigate the case and stayed in the Resch's house. Roll claimed that there were indeed telekinesis events in the house, but never when Roll was actually looking at the objects in question. Reporter Mike Harden and photographer Fred Shannon were also given access to the Resch household, but like Roll, didn't see any paranormal activity until they looked away. Shannon attempted to take a picture with his camera while looking in a different direction and managed to capture one photo of the house telephone flying across Tina's lap. Still, many speculated that Tina was able to manipulate the objects while others were looking away, probably because she was a young girl who craved attention. Subsequently, a video camera caught Tina knocking over a table lamp and screaming as if it happened in front of her, confirming many individuals' doubts about the paranormal activity. However, Tina Rash's story only gets stranger. As an adult, Tina was married and divorced twice and had one child. At age three, Tina's child died. Both Tina and her then boyfriend were arrested and charged for murder, though Tina wasn't present when her daughter died. Still, Tina received a life sentence plus 20 years and remains in prison to this day. Tina didn't mention telekinetic activity during her trial, though perhaps such a tragic finale to such a bizarre life is no big surprise. Now, if you want some more unsolved mysteries, then check out that link on the top there. Otherwise, this massive paranormal playlist here will freak you out. Now, remember to leave us a comment down below. We love getting your feedback and pulverize that thumbs up button. And that's it for me. I'll see you all next time. Huh?